everyone, it's me again, Julia. How is everything and everyone going, wherever you are in the world? Hey, I am just at Lash Trap Academy. We are now here and um, I wanted to show you, for those of you who are beginners or just starting out, not really sure what to get when setting up setting up your own, own salons and on what you should be getting. And when I say salons, it could be just a room in your house, yeah? <music> So most importantly is that you have a designated and dedicated room for your lashes. You can't just set up your lash bed somewhere on the side of the kitchen or lounge room. Yeah, It has to be a designated area. Um, why? Because of hygiene reasons. You don't want your children to run around, your dogs to run around. You want to keep that nice and clean and also for the comfort of your client and it just looks much, much more professional. Number two is you need a bed, right? So let me show you. There's many, many different types of beds. Now, yeah. this, oh, you can see here, I'm lifting it up now. It's a very, very basic massage bed. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six on top of each other right now. But a very, very basic massage bed. Now, obviously, this one has our cover on top, but this one is a white one. You can get them for around $100 on eBay, um, depending on how dirty they are some of those massage beds are really really skinny i would get one that's much wider i always prefer to get at least 800 across and not 600 just because not every client that you will have is a skinny client yeah very 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 important i just want to tell you the basics today so it's nothing really really fancy that really is the basic stuff i will also show you some of the stuff that i have now accumulated over the years of doing this for almost 10 years now that you know you can add on once you actually start making some money but please do not go crazy please don't go crazy straight away and buy all of these fancy things because you won't need them straight away especially if you're starting up from home which i did many years ago so again very 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 basic massage table massage bed for around 100 120 dollars I'm, I'm talking australian dollars so us it might be 80 or something like that it's very very easy and um, where can we buy a good lash bed and what brand? Well, if you're talking about a good lash bed, uh, it's very, very different than what I'm talking about right now. But a lot of people have those very basic massage beds just from eBay or from the, a supplier. Like just type into Google, depending on where you live, beauty bed supplier or salon bed supplier. And that way you can find some really good beds. I know that there is a couple of people in the night in Germany, there's a, a brand now as well. They're selling actual lash beds. It was designed for lash artists, but they will be probably in the thousands and up. Yeah. But if you don't want to spend thousands of dollars to start with, because this is what the video is all about, then one of those foldable lash beds is completely fine. Really is completely fine. But what you can do is you can go to a, like a hardware store and they can cut a little mat like this. In Australia, this is, I'll show you. I wish I had a cameraman walking around with me. So I measured out my lash bed. Now this is a different lash bed. This was around $800. Um, and it has little rolls. So you can roll it around and it goes up and down. And also the headpiece goes up like that. But that one is more of an advanced bed. And I think it's about 900 across, 90 centimeters across. But this one was cut by Clark Rubber. So you can put that on top, put a nice blanket on top, Make sure after you have put a blanket on top to make it look nice, you still use a disposable cover on top, just for hygiene reasons that you change for every single client. So that is just a little example because it's really, really nice and soft now because some of those cheaper beauty beds, they're, they're just really, really uncomfortable and quite hard. So you don't, you probably don't want to have your client lying on that thing especially if you are a beginner for the first, I don't know, three or four hours of lashing them, it can get quite uncomfortable. Um, another thing you will need, turn me around again, is a chair. Now, chairs come in different sizes as well. This is a little round stool. I prefer the ergonomic ones. Now, do I have an ergonomic one here right now? Of course I don't. Okay, let me move again. <laughs> And I think we're going to stay in that area now anyway, because I'll show you the rest of the setup. 
I use my ergonomic one. It's very dirty, but I've had it for many years. I think it's about nine years old. So this has a little buck and also it fits my bum. <laughs> my bum needs to be comfy. So this is the bed that I'm using and um, yeah, I love it. So chair. Now I also have a bed that I wanted to show you because I know a lot of you have been asking for this. But this again is not a beginner's bed, okay? And again, I have cushions in between. I have like mattresses in between. And this one has a little button here where you can lift them up and down. So this one, for example, makes that part go down. Up. It squeaks, unfortunately, I need to oil it. I don't know if you can tell, but the whole thing now lifts off the floor. Yeah, this is not made at the moment. It's looking a little bit um, grotty. And you can put it back down again. And you can also angle the whole thing too. This thing cost me 1700 Australian dollars. Again, this is more of an advanced bed, which you don't necessarily need. Um, and this one is also, I think something like this is also available on eBay. You just type in electric bed and there you go. Another thing I would highly recommend you get is a little um, neck roll, or this is also called an ankle roll, not ankle. And um, what is the area between, under your knees called? I don't know. It's for under your knees, okay? So your client can have a really nice ergonomic posture when they're lying down. This needs to go under their knees, okay? So they don't get their back sore straight away. Some people prefer to lash with a pillow, some prefer without. I personally do use a pillow. This is the one I use. And there's many, many different ones. They're all very, you know, similar. But what I like is that this pillow has more of a straighter side and it doesn't kind of fall off on the sides. And I have it literally tucked in underneath all my blankets. So it has more of a smoother transition here, you see? Like it goes over nice and smoothly without, like if you were to just put this pillow on, you could see how there's a bit of a gap and it would just not be as comfortable for the client. It is called a bolster pillow. Interesting, Linda, thank you for letting me know. What else do we need when we're just starting out? We need a lamp, yeah? Now, again, you don't need to invest straight away into the most expensive lamp. This one is called a Glamcore light, yeah? Glamcore professional. You can either go, if you ever wanting to get a Glamcore light, now this one is, Put into the ceiling which they do not come like that hang on i'll show you what they come like you can get it from glamcoretech.com i believe or from lash tribe and actually glamcore lights sorry this is my filming room glamcore lights come like that so there's many different types but they can come on a stand like this and what i love about them is that they have movable arms okay and they also have different strengths of light. And they're also, I can't turn it on now because I only have one hand free. And you have to push these two buttons at the same time. I can't do it right now, sorry. Um, and this one I like too because I can put my phone on and record, but if you don't want to record anything, then you don't need a light like this. And you can just go to Bunnings or your hardware store um, and just get something that has daylight bulbs and that can go quite bright and that you can also twist and turn into different directions, preferably. Or you may need two, one on this side of the client's head, one on the other side of the client's head, just because of shadows. It's very, very difficult to lash properly if you're casting a shadow with your own hand over your client's head the whole time. There's many, many different good pillow companies. This is just one that I've used for, you know, for many years now, from the beginning, and I haven't changed. Now, what else do we need when we're just starting out? Very, very important is this little device. This one is called a high grow meter. Again, you can get it from your hardware store, from your Bunnings, whatever. This will show you not only the time, but it will show you the temperature in the room and also the humidity. You can't probably see this properly now. There, 25.7 degrees, 41% humidity. Um, and so high grow meters are important because that way we know how we can regulate our room and if we are lashing and our lashes are not sticking fast enough for example you can look at the hygrometer and go oh that's maybe because 
my humidity is not high enough and then you can just up your humidity or use a faster glue or up your temperature okay hygrometer very important very important to have a mirror for your clients to check afterwards something that is not necessary but i love <laughs> is a vortex mixer this is mixing your glue so you just stick your glue onto it and it mixes it within 10 seconds i love it it's amazing um, but again, these are not cheap. They're like around 100 120 dollars or something like that, but I really really like them Something else as a beginner That you will need Is a practice head. Yeah, now this is Christina I have many practice heads of course because we are a lash training Academy Um goes without saying we also need under eye pads um, I prefer to have microphone micro pore tape under eye pads and also blue barrier tape um which i don't have right now no uh different different types of tapes um and practice lashes as well so that you can still practice i still practice my lashing and my fanning and different styles and techniques um i wouldn't say every day maybe not even on a weekly basis but maybe every couple or three weeks i do get out my practice head and i do practice um, you know some of my styling ideas okay now when it comes to storing i will actually move this now when it comes to storing all of your little bits and bobs i will show you what you need you don't need everything again this is an accumulation i've had for the last 10 years or so now this thing um i'll find i think it's called vanity they on instagram really really great not cheap but again you don't need this yeah so i'm just telling you you need something like a, a little container with different compartments that can hold all of your different things okay so what you will need are some mascara wands and you need some flock applicators also lip gloss applicators you will also need some micro brushes that are tiny like this these are the only three things that you really need yeah within in terms of disposables for the lash application no i'm lying you also need brushes of course to cleanse if you don't want to use brushes because it's a lot of waste throwing out into the into the world and you know if we're a bit more on the greener side we probably don't want to use something like that you can try and get something made out of bamboo something natural or maybe you want to use these little ones but again there's lots of plastic I'm hoping that they're bringing out something very soon that is um, more biodegradable. You can get, of course, now biodegradable, you know, those little cotton tips, but they are very, very linty. They're full of lint um, and these are lint free. You do need lint free because if you use anything with lint on it, then you will have an exothermic reaction with your adhesive or you can have one. So we don't want to do that. Um, I still have a little bit of micellar water. I don't use this to clean um the eyes but i use it for the around the eye area yeah the makeup if there's heaps and heaps of makeup i use this first with a bit of cotton um, pads and i just wipe around the eye area and then i will clean the lashes now of course you need a lash cleanser because i'm lash trap i have a lash trap cleanser um so you need the cleanser you need it kind some kind of makeup remover we've talked about tapes um you will need um you don't need to, but you can have a little Nano Mister. This one was a promo one, which I found so cute. I, I think I got this one from Jill. But um, obviously Lash Tribe also has their own misters. I don't know where mine went. I think one of my students may have taken one. <laughs> Maybe I gave it to her, I don't know. Um, a little fan is also a great idea for in between drying. Um, let's talk about products some more. So if you are a beginner, if you are a beginner, not only do you need a cleanser and a cleansing water or something like that for makeup, you also need a remover. It's very, very important. A lot of people do not give remover in their kits when they're training beginners, and that's horrendous. You need to learn how to remove lashes properly. If you don't know how to do that, you need to go into my YouTube channel, lashtribe.tv. There is a full video on how to remove eyelash extensions, please. Make sure you know how to do that, yeah? Oh, I do have the blue tape. So this one is called the Next Care Sensitive Tape. Yeah, this is another tape I recommend and um, also stock. I've got a fanning liquid here. It's uh, the new range. You can see the label is not quite 
I just tried this label out. Um, labels are coming in about two weeks. A very, very important, I don't personally use the fanning liquid, it was just to try out the sticker. Um, very important to have a, um, not necessary, but as a beginner, you should have a primer, just in case. Uh, because it could be that your room, again, the, the temperature and humidity and everything is not working quite right. You can have like a lash primer that will um, speed up the lash application a little bit, okay? Because it's like an accelerant. Uh, I also have this little one. It's a very thin makeup remover, which I remove. Really, really hard to remove makeup with that this and this doesn't get off. I use this, like when you have clients coming in with... Um, I had to wear fake lashes the other day because I have no lashes on at the moment and I had to do a video. So I put fake lashes on and I had that fake lash glue from that strip ugh, in my lashes for days. So I, this morning I decided um, <clears throat> to just quickly go and remove it with this and that works wonders. Also removes mis like waterproof mascara and waterproof eyeliner and things like that. Have um, a bottle of saline. I just ran out of saline. I usually have a big bottle of saline just down below and then I refill it. And then have this um, dropper bottle, yeah? This one, I can show you. When you squirt out the water, it has a beautiful stream coming out that's quite firm. So that can go really into the client's lashes, right into the um, base of the lashes when you are cleaning them and you're rinsing very very important to do that and then of course iPads yeah I have two different sizes uh, the slim ones and then the, the original ones here just because not everyone fits the big ones but again you can choose whatever you want what you usually have then I have these ones here these are um, lint free I think they are called nail polish removers remover pads but I use them for my adhesive once the bottle has been shaken I um, clean the nozzle of the bottle with this one here and that's it oh yeah something else you might need as a beginner is a mirror like this one so you can check your work um, and then again this one I think it's from vanity collection from Instagram I'm not affiliated but I wish I were they're amazing and then I'm also trialing out an eye cream at the moment, um, which I might be stocking because after you wash your client's lashes and you put eye cream on it, oh, they love it. They love it so, so much. And then of course you need a trolley and you need some tissues and a bin. Now I have an empty or oh, a used empty box that I always use for my bin because it's nice and close. Okay, let's talk about lashes. Lashes are important, very, very important. Oh, and so are makeup remover wipes, of course. Um, okay, let me just talk about it. I don't wanna pull all of my lashes out here. When it comes to lashes, if you are a very, very, very beginner, there we go. If you are a very beginner, and we're just talking classic lashes, okay? Now grab a pen and paper if you're a beginner and you're starting out in classic lashing. And I, I literally just want to talk about the basics, yeah? What you need to have are 0 0.10, 0 0.12 if you want to, and 0 0.15. And then I would get maybe a mixed tray and a B curl, and then I will get the full size trays in C and D curl. And maybe another mixed tray in LC, depending on your clientele. When you have a lot of Asian clients or clients that want to have that real flick happening, L curl is beautiful to use on, like an LD or an L plus curl, for example. The reason why I don't go higher than 0 0.15 is that it's usually, 99% of the time, not healthy on the natural lash. I've, I find that a lot of people these days use still heavier, like the way I learned 10 years ago with 0 0.18, 0 0.20, 0 0.25, it's not healthy. The lashes will not be lasting very long and the clients will end up with scar tissue in their follicles and the lashes will get thinner and thinner and thinner and they can actually fall out completely and not reproduce. So we don't want to overweigh our client's natural lashes, okay? So classic lashes, 0 0.15 at the highest. I love to use 0 0.12 for full sets of lashes and mix it in with 0 0.10 for the most natural and fullest look. I don't actually use that much 0 0.15. When we're not talking in terms of volume and you're just starting out, you definitely need 0 0.05 and 0 0.07, yeah? 
and I still mix in sometimes lower ones as well because with mega volume you use 0 0.03 um, and I still use that in volume as well uh, but I, I will never I tend to not go in an everyday client that has a normal amount of lashes and normal length of lashes I will not usually go over 12 millimeters however if we're talking about specialty sets and someone with crazy long lashes 13 14 15 and even 16 mil with 2d with little spikes to create that kim k wispy look is also okay just make sure that you know your conversion of lashes um very 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 good so that you know how much can my client actually carry safely without damaging the lashes okay and again with the volume i would also get maybe a mixed tray in a b curl b curl is hardly used these days um, I know because we are also a lash distributor and we hardly sell B curl, honestly. C, D, double D we sell um, and L, C are the, the main ones. B curl, not going so well. So these are the lashes that I would recommend. Now what lengths do I recommend? I recommend to get full size trays in 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then maybe some mixed trays um, in the higher and the lower um, when I talk about lower let me see if I have something like that here I can show you the storage I think I've done a video like this before now this is not the cleanest at the moment um, <clears throat> but this is the lash storage how I have it right now and I've written down some of the numbers I have a tray of lashes only has short lashes in them I don't have one here but what it is basically it's five six seven and eight mil it's just a tray of lashes with short lashes because I, I don't find that you need the five mil all that often um, but I get my six mil seven and all that in the full length tray so if you are ever wanting to have or try some shorter lengths it's great to get a mixed tray. You don't need to get all of the different lengths in different size trays because it all costs so much money, right? Now let's talk about once you have your trays of lashes, right? And you want to take them off. As a very, very beginner with no, not much money, I would recommend just go to your hardware store and buy some tiles, honestly. Tiles, short ones like that or longer ones they're only costing a few cents maybe a dollar at the most and they are quite heavy yeah so that's probably the downfall and trying to store them you probably need a few drawers to store them in because you need to lay them all flat you can't just stack them on top of each other so just get something that is cheap and does the thing if you're doing my classic course online you see i'm still teaching what i taught three and a half years ago where i still use the bunnings tiles of course now things have evolved things have advanced <laughs> i have a store thingy like this i have another one as well and i have all my tiles in here now they are rotating i don't reuse them uh, on every single client because i disinfect my things in between i put them in here wash them with soap and then um i reuse them later on again yeah so i don't just have them sitting there rotating with every single client i mean not rotating with every single client and then of course i have my glasses because i need glasses that is i think literally everything you need to set yourself up as a lash artist oh of course you need adhesive you need your, your um probably you don't need clear in the beginning unless you want to do um work with colored lashes but you know some people prefer to work with clear glue as well i mean clear adhesive is great um to use too but if you don't want to get everything all at once just try and start with one adhesive and then try different ones afterwards yeah one thing that's very very important i think is to keep note of everything and write it all down so you can see here very important as a beginner to have a consultation form yeah my client here address email phone date of birth and then this is the consultation form here that I have it goes over a few pages and then this section is the most important that you write down exactly what you have used on this person very important is what glue have you used and when was this glue open 
so you know maybe one week someone comes back and the next day someone comes back and the next day three people come back and everyone has lost their lashes then you know exactly what was used and what glue and how long it was open for and then you can do your little drawing here and write down exactly what people were after or what you did for them okay cool well if there's anything else that you can think of let me know i think that's pretty much it um, to set yourself up and of course when I set up I cover everything of course so I have like a, a white cover here and then I put everything to my right yeah I have my tile with my lashes on them and my glue right there yeah I don't work off my clients for it because it's dangerous um, and not because you don't know what you're doing just because the clients are unpredictable and if that client sneezes or, or twitches or whatnot that glue can go into their eye but yeah let me know what you thought about the video if you got some value from it and don't forget to get notified if you're watching this video in the group if you're going to watch this on youtube don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notifications so that you know when a new video comes out and i will see you soon bye oh and don't forget to visit lashtribe.com.au either bye